just last month we celebrated 10 years. And as the year began, I asked God, okay, I'm going into 10 years of Sea Africa. What impact can I have aside from creating jobs and women empowerment? And it came to me that sustainability is the future. Sustainability is important. And as a Christian, God cares about the environment. The Africa is empowering young women through employment, employing young, talented designers, cutters, pattern drafters, and tailors. What would you tell someone who wants to come in in this fashion industry right now? I would advise them in several ways. Number one is stay true to yourself. This industry is very oversaturated and it's easy to compare yourself. So you have to stay true to what you like, what you like to see, what vision you have, and try and be as authentic as possible. Number two, hard work. They're gonna be late nights, early mornings. Many times you'll be tested. Many times you may face failure, but you have to get back up. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to create something new that you've right. never seen. Work hard. <laughs> Work hard. And number three, yes. which is the most important for me, is stay consistent. Be consistent. I've been in this industry for 10 years and there have been many times that you feel like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too hard. It's too challenging. Maybe there are other opportunities that may come, but in your heart, you have a passion and something that you want to fulfill you have to stay consistent even when it gets hard even when you get tested you, you consistency is what, is what pays it's important to us to empower women as women are the future women have been marginalized and sidelined for a long time so as the africa we work to ensure that women are empowered women are motivated women know their worth i think our role is to share our journey I think our role is also to inspire upcoming startups. Especially when I had children, I felt that I want to create something for them. And as a result, many other Kenyans and Africans who are like them, who need something that, you know, relates to them as children and as Africans something that's made from here. For my firstborn, I had not purchased anything locally because there was not much variety in terms of made in Kenya. So when I saw that gap, I decided, okay, how can I do this? And how can I do this in a way that is impactful? When I was starting, there were, there were no such forums. There was no forum for us to learn um, how to do it. So a lot of the lessons of learned, I'm hoping that if we share them, the startups can avoid some of the mistakes that we made in our journey and scale faster, um, learn from incredible women. Believing in your vision and where you, where you would like to go. That's the, the one thing that my team can tell you, I tell them all the time, you know, we have a vision, there's somewhere we're trying to go, let's keep dreaming, let's keep believing. Um, fast forward to, let's say, last year, I really wanted a storefront in a mall that I admire, a mall that has good traffic, and you know, that I can be proud to say my brand is in that mall. Oh. Maybe in five years, my vision will be different or my goal will be different and I'll dream something new. So you have to keep believing in yourself and believing you can achieve it. For the longest time, I used to feel like because, say, so-and-so has done this, can't do it. Yeah, there's not enough room. I think there's room for everyone. There's room for your ideas. There's market as well. There's people who will want what you're putting out. But for me, it's important that I don't do something I don't like. And even Babs, I always tell her, if we're putting out a collection, and I myself can't wear it, then we are failed. I want to be able to wear everything that I put out. Ideally, it should be an embodiment of me or an expression of me, and it should be something I'm proud of. For me, the most important thing is to provide a solution. You identify a problem. Yeah. For example, when I started, there was a 
big problem of unique clothing. Um, so I said, I'm going to bring unique clothing to the industry. As I grew, I realized quality is important to me. You look for an audience that has that problem and market to them. And as you grow, you also have to re-strategize, refine and be adaptable to what people are saying, what your customers are saying. And that's something we're big on. We ask for feedback. I know that I've always loved fashion. Yeah. I've dressed my siblings and my mom for as long as I can remember. I loved dressing up. Mm -hmm. I loved going to church because it was a chance to dress up. And I remember shopping and loving shopping. However, <laughs> <laughs> When you're growing up, there's no such thing. But I was growing up, there was no such thing as a tea. When I grew up, I want to be a fashion designer. It's either you want to be a doctor, lawyer, banker, you know, and yes, then like... The big five. The big five. Yeah, yeah. And I started my business of selling clothes from Gikomba. I felt, I really enjoy this. I enjoy seeing people wearing the clothes that I've selected for them. I enjoy making women feel beautiful. I enjoy um, styling as well. So it's something that came up. However, I know I had a passion for fashion from a long time ago. At the end of the day, money will follow you if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and if you're doing the hard things well. Not many people want to do the hard things well. Money will come as long as you're passionate about what you're doing, right. you're disciplined, you're consistent, and you're doing the hard things well. Do you feel accomplished right now? Yeah. Um, not yet. Not yet. That is such a good question because I, I, I feel like I struggle with that because I'm always looking for more. I find that, and this is just me being honest with you, but I find that whenever I hit a goal, I don't feel like it's enough. Mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, what else? What next? So as, as far as I've come, yes, this is amazing. And I'm grateful for all that God has blessed me with. And even the fact that I'm able to employ women, that um, we're able to pay salaries, rent. Those are things that I can only have gratitude about. I don't take for granted. At the same time, like I would love to employ even 1,000 tailors, you know. I would love to have many stores. I would love to inspire upcoming fashion designers and even change the industry in a way that I can say I've created awareness of sustainability and I've helped other brands move towards being sustainable. I have accomplished a lot. <laughs> I don't want to take that away, but I still have a lot, a lot to accomplish, a lot more. I have an incredible team. They are very hardworking, they're passionate, they're visionaries and they're dedicated. There are many times that we've had to work overtime, late nights, like I said, to meet deadlines, and they believe in the vision. Sustainability for me comes about in two ways. Sustainability of the business, is your business sustainable? And then there's sustainability as a fashion brand. What steps are you taking towards reducing your carbon footprint on the environment? So what am I doing about reducing our impact and spreading awareness on its importance? For us, we went about um, looking for more sustainable fabrics. This was made in Makweni. I don't know if Bob's told you. Women in Makweni um, weave together. It's a team effort. It's done by a brand called Tosheka Textiles. Mm -hmm. So looking for brands that align with ours, mm -hmm. um, that are sustainable. Secondly is ensuring that the items we make are made to last. We are in the business of creating timeless fashion. There is that angle of it and sustainability as a business in the sense that, okay, as we have grown, we have, I've had to get an accountant. We have had to really price our items in a way that makes sense and the business is able to run on its own. Setting out your plans for the day and achieving what you've set out to achieve is a good day, no matter what that is. I would want to open stores um, in Uganda, Nigeria, South Africa, Miami, even Asia. So the idea is to grow exponentially and reach as many people as possible, dress as many people as possible, meet incredible people and learn from them because every time you meet someone you learn. My first studio shoot was with you. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I remember I was just like, I, I found you on Instagram and yeah, so I was like, okay, Royal Ruth, and I looked at your coach, I'm like, okay, this girl's done some nice stuff. Mm. Then I found where you were shooting at the time was right next to my house. Do you remember? Yes. It was literally walking distance. Yeah, yeah. 
So I called, I was so nervous, I was like, I don't know who I spoke to, I don't know if it was you or another lady. Yeah. And I scheduled the shoot and it was so exciting just seeing like actual, like a real photographer <laughs> took our pictures and now they are here. Yeah. It was awesome. And you are an awesome director. All the models we've worked with always say how comfortable they feel in the shoot. So I'm glad that you've been part of it. Thank you for that feedback.